Now, y'all remember I told y'all that pirate ships are just slave ships. Jop out. B, B, King. You're free or die. If he is the head that will the crown. All right, kings and queens, like this video. Subscribe to King Ja Power. Go over there to the throne of King Ja Power. Subscribe there. Also, the God Ja Power YouTube page. Videos is on the way. Okay. King Ja Power website on the way. All right. Now, listen to this, family. There was a lot of crow eating on the Cape that night. Widow was a slave ship. And it was launched in 1716, the bell tells us that. It was built to carry slaves from Africa to the New World. And this was the maiden voyage of the Witta when it was headed back from Africa with a shipment of slaves. They sold the slaves in Jamaica and they were taking the money back to England when it was captured in the Windward Passage by Sam Bellamy. So the Witta as a pirate ship was un unlike a lot of others because it was also slave crews, that, that the slaves that became free as the crew of the ship. Right, a third of the Witta crew were former slaves, and um, on board this ship, they were free. There's a great irony there, obviously, which history's covered up rather neatly. A third of the pirates in the golden age of piracy from 1680 to 1730 were of African origin, most of whom were former slaves. And on ships like the Witta, they were free. They could vote. They were elected as officers, even captains of ships, based on what they contributed to the Brotherhood, not by the color of their skin or their religion. There's a lesson there. How did you find it? Well, so when I heard that, I was like, what? There was something I ain't even never heard before. So family, like this video, because we about to get into the information, because as soon as I heard this right here, I'm like, hold on. See, People out there, this for them groups that be out there talking about they from everywhere but Africa, okay? And so they what they say is, where the slave ships, bro? Where the slave ships? And see, here it is right here. See what I'm saying? Hold on a second. All right. So let's get into the information. Y'all know I was going to get the research. Now, the ship, I told, like I say, the slave ships, the pirate ships, or slave ships, these goofies are like, well, where the slave ships set, bro, the goofy moors, the goofy copper ops, all over the place, you know, groups or whatever. Okay, now look at this. This is a this should be a movie. So the Wally Gutter, Gulla, known simply as the Walla, was a fully rigged galleon ship that was originally built as a passenger cargo slave ship. On the return leg of his maiden voyage, okay, of the third triangle trade, Africa, America, and Europe, okay, they killed you right there, okay. Wally Gullah was captured by pirate captain uh, Black Sam, okay, beginning a new role in the golden age of piracy, okay. And so the Wally Gullah is a uh, uh, namesake is African slave ports. Okay? And uh, owner is Sir Humphrey, Sir Humphreys, which is a, a British businessman. Okay? So let's get into the research. Now, you see right here, so the pirate vessel, which is a, a private vessel, okay, in 1715 from London, it launched uh, in 1716, okay, his home port is London, captured by pirates Lawrence Prince, uh, late 1717, okay, three days later near the Lower Bahamas, all right, let's get it, let's get into the research, fam, because I want y'all to see this real quick, next, now, let's get it, Bellamy, Black Sam, okay, sailed the Wiley Gullah up the coast of the colonial America, capturing other ships as he went along on uh, April the 26th, 1717. The Wiley Gullah was caught in a violent storm and wrecked off the coast of Cape Cod in Massachusetts. Only two of the Wiley Gullah crew survived alongside seven others who were uh, sloop captured 
uh, by bailing me earlier, six days earlier. See, <clears throat> six to nine survivors were hanged. Okay, two were had been forced into piracy, uh, pri yeah, piracy or were freed. One Indian, okay, crewman was sold into slavery. Okay, and so you got a, a, a ship that's done left Africa with a lot of gold and a lot of artifacts headed to the Americas from the Americas to Europe. But when it get into Cape Cod, okay, it wrecked. Okay, that's what it's saying. Okay, and so you got these Africans on board that hijack the ship, okay, and to steal the money to pay for the uh free the free Africans, okay? This should be a movie. Listen to this. The Wally C, this is how they found it. And this is why I study marine archaeology right here. Okay, which I'm gonna show you. Okay. See, they diving down to find treasure. And when they go inside these so-called treasure ships or pirate ships, they find and chain Africans. Okay, that's just a fact. Okay, there's no different than a slave ship, a cargo ship, and a pirate ship. Okay, they all the same. They call them pirate ship because the ships, the, the ships was capturing other ships. Okay, do you understand what I'm saying? See this, and I know black people don't know nothing about this right here. This right here is new research. Okay, because they just found it. I think in uh 1984, I think. Uh, so the Wally Gullah treasure captured pirate gold, including the discovery of 260 uh, years until 1984, when the wreck was found off the coast of Cape Cod, buried under 10 uh to 50 feet of sand and debris, ranging from 16 to 30 feet in deep spread of the four mile parallel. Okay. In the eastern coast, with the discovery of the ship's bell, which I'm gonna show y'all in 1985, and a small black brass plast car in 19 uh, uh, 2013, both inscribed the ship name and made and voyage the Wiley Gullah is a fully authenticated ship of the golden age. Now, if y'all heard that, uh, the person that found it, which I'm gonna show y'all, he said a third of the uh, pirates of that golden age of piracy were Africans. They were Africans. Okay, now look. The Wally Gullah history of pirate ship the, uh, built as a slave ship in 1715 100 foot to 300 ton Wally Gullah was hijacked during the maiden voyage by pirate Samuel uh, Black Sam, okay, uh, not long after departing Jamaica. Okay, the captain and the and his crew used the Wally Gullah to pirate ships. Now, look, now that's particular. You see, going from Africa to the Caribbean to North America. Okay, because you know the FBI dummy group be trying to separate themselves from people in the Caribbean, saying they don't deserve reparations because they not foundational African Americans. When all y'all came over on the same boats. Okay, so like Dr. Cox said, uh, any Caribbean could be an African American, and any African American could be Caribbean. It just depends on how the slave master felt that day. Period. And it's the proof right here. The captain and his crew of the Wally Gullah to uh, 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 stole other pirate ships before eventually selling it to North to the coast of uh, Massachusetts. Okay, so they selling from Africa. Okay to the Caribbean to America where it is believed that uh, Bellamy's lover Martha uh, Hullet was waiting for him okay but the Wally Gullah never reached his destination as uh, a legend it had been a legend uh, that the pirate crew was too drunk to finish the journey okay and the ship they was on their sled celebrating because they done stole the ship and, and and uh, black folks was out there getting drunk, happy, cause they, you know, they free. If you was able to get on one of these pirate ships, the uh, captain would free you, you know, as his crew. You know what I'm saying? And so when they freed this as his crew, Black Sam them stole the whole ship. See what I'm saying? And they on there getting drunk. I can see niggas now. 
<laughs> getting drunk on the ship and I'm walking around and done suck it. Okay, suck. <laughs> Too happy for freedom. You know what I'm saying? So before eventually sailing to the north coast of uh, Wally Fleet, Massachusetts, where it was believed that Bellamy's lover, Marion Halliott, was waiting for him. But the Wally Guller never reached a destination as the pirate crew was too drunk to finish the journey. And the ship came afoul of the powerful northeastern night of April 26, 1717. The winds were 70 miles per hour strong. And the uh, sea was churning, okay, causing swells of 30 feet. Uh, although there were sights of land, the Wally Guller crew could, could uh, navigate. The storm slammed in to the slant sandbar and sunk it, okay, and sunk it. Now, let's find where we at. The Wally crew uh, navigate the storm and slammed into the sandbar, okay, uh, breaking apart only in uh, only... 146 men aboard survived the wreck. Only two survived the wreck, okay, of, of the 146. It was believed that Bellamy's ship contained treasure. I told you. So a slave ship is a pirate ship. Oh, shit. Yeah. So a slave ship is a pirate ship. I make sure y'all ain't with nowhere. Now, uh, 53 other vessels, and uh, it was 53 other vessels, okay, that spread out the lost fortune of the peoples of the flock. So they had done captured many ships. So they was like a, a pirate game. Okay. They was it was fifty three ships. So they was so they was transporting Africans and everything. Okay. But it was initially set out to be a slave ship, but it turned into a pirate ship. Okay, see? Entering the um local underwater explorer Barry Clifton, which which is the man who found it, uh the hunt for the Wally Guller proved to be intriguing to too intriguing to resist and fascinating tale since his childhood. Now, how he knew that he went to the Africans that live up there in, 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 in Massachusetts and Cape Cod or whatnot and got the hand me down stories. And they had told him about this slave ship slash treasure ship that was out there. OK, now he went out there you know, looking for treasure, but ending up finding that the treasure was the story of these uh, 53 ships of these African pirates, okay, which history tried to hide from you, and this is why people like them all talking about, where the slave ships at? Where the slave ships at? Okay? It's hundreds of thousands of slave ships on the bottom of the ocean, okay? Once it, once he outlawed uh, 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 George, uh, uh, Abraham Lincoln outlawed slavery, Okay, they started to sink those ships and start not to use them. Okay, because they were still in the black market of piracy, uh, uh, uh piracy and slave trade. Okay, they was black market doing it. You could uh look down there on the Gulf Coast. Uh, what the name of that ship? I showed y'all that one before, and I'll pull it up if I need to. Let me get through this story right quick. He was convinced that it could be found. But not everyone was so optimistic that the archaeologists, whether doubters and critics who believed that the ship was inclusively pirates, who uh, once piled the Atlantic waters. In March 1884, a Yankee published the profile of Clifford's uh, determination to discover the wreck a few months after the original story appeared in Clifford's work, paid off and unearthed the fang, frame of the pirate ship. Okay. Which I'm gonna show y'all. There goes some of the gold. Now here goes here go, uh replicas of the pirate ship that they found on the bottom of the ocean. Okay, there it is right there. Where the pirate, where the where the slave ship sit, bro? Where the slaves there they go right there. Okay, and there's many more than that. Okay, and there go the bell right there, which I'm gonna show y'all. And this is some of uh Black Sam and his crew gold. You know what I'm saying? There you go right there. Black man. See? See right there in the corner? Black man. See what I'm saying? Now, let me go over here. See, the Africans. See, we Africans. Stop it. See, y'all tried to come with that goofy story. You know, oh, man, we ain't come from no Africa. How we come from Africa and, and, and there ain't no slave, slave ships. And how, how did we get over here? Well, it's 400 ships on the West. I mean, 400 slave dungeons on the West Coast of Africa. Okay, that's evidence for one. Then you got ship logs of what they, uh, these 
so-called cargo ships turned pirate ships, turned slave ships, slave ships turned pirate ships. Okay, you got the captain's law of all who was on the ship. So that's that's proof right there. You see what I'm saying? See, this is what they can't do. Now, look right here. Now, if y'all see right here at the bottom, it looked like a rock. That's a mummy of an African that, you know, when the ship wrecked, he, the cannon fell on top of him. And the mineral or uh, salt water mixed with the iron and then it created uh, an iron casket, basically. Okay. And, you know, they picked this rock up and it got gold coins in it. It got uh, a human uh, body, an African body in it. Okay. And it's all documented in this book right here. Okay. It's all documented in this book right here. Uh, the expedition of the water. Okay. That it just sound African. Okay. It's a Wally Gullah. Okay. Angola. See what I'm saying? <laughs> Now, six of these skeletons currently belong to the anonymous member states of arts. A uh, 110 foot long slave ship crew, okay, one that existed 146 men who were former slaves, African slaves, okay, African slaves, okay, and the two, uh, 29 year old Bellamy, okay, uh, who was Black Sam. Uh, only 29. Only 29, those average life expectancy in Europe around the time was 41. Okay, so look, he go right here, the guy that did the marine archaeology and found the ship. Now look, the remains of these, uh, of at least six pirates have been found off the coast of Cape Cod. Now, explorer Barry Clifton on board this former slave ship, a third of Wally Dulles' crew were former slaves. They were experimenting in democracy 50 years before George Washington. See what I'm saying? See, that's a significant story. Hold on. Here you go right here. Now, y'all see the, how the ship looked, the model of it. You know what I'm saying? Now, and they got, like I say, they got the big one. You can't make the model, okay, without having the big one first. It's like trying to make a building without a blueprint. See what I'm saying? A remarkable re replica of the Wally Gullah was made by uh, Elon L. Morion uh, and was constructed entirely of wood piano. Okay. In, beginning in eight, 1987 and it was completed in 1989. It took exactly two uh, 2,000 hours to build. Okay. The Wally Gullah was built at a uh, castle shipyard outside of London, England, a slave ship, okay, a slave ship, okay, and it was launched in 1716. Most English slave ships at the time were controlled by Royal African Company, okay, the Royal African Company, okay, but the Wally Gullah was financed privately by a group of wealthy investors. The Wally Gullah was uh, 300 ton. And had mass, a mass square, a rig uh, gallery, meaning it could roll during uh, calm wind, winds. It could, uh, it was a fast ship and it could reach speeds up to 15 knots. The 5,000 mile journey from West Africa to the Caribbean, okay, on to Massachusetts, took them up to three months. In the winter of 1717, the Wiley Gullah was. The final leg of her journey to back to London, when it when it was captured near the Bahamas by pirates led by uh, Black Sam, she was she was wrecked a few months later on the shores of Cape Cod in 18, April 26, seventeen seventeen. All right. Now. We hope that modern cutting edge technology could help identify these pir pirates and reunite them with their descendants. Okay? Their descendants. And then Clifford added in that the statement we know that a third of the crew was of African origin. African. Okay? Not where the slave ship said, man. Where the slave ship said, man. Goofy Negroes. I be banging y'all. See, this is why. They'll never try to, you know, get in a real debate 
with me because I crushed the whole nation. I crushed the whole online fake black Indian crew, the, the Moors. I crushed all of them. Okay, how can you be indigenous and you came from Africa? Okay, how can you be indigenous and you came from Africa? See, what you doing is, okay, you trying to separate yourself from the motherland, right? Because you ashamed of slavery, okay? But what, in, in trying to claim indigenous so they can't kick you out of America, but what you don't know is, since you ashamed of slavery, the Indians was enslaved before the African, okay? And the Indians could not survive the brutal punishment. So what did they do? They went to Africa and grabbed the strongest people that ever existed, okay? And a goofy gonna come up here and try to say, oh man, Africans is weak, man. They was enslaved and all of this. And I could tell by the way he was talking, he was a white man, okay? Trying to, a lot of them people were out there are uh, light, bright, and damn near white, or just straight up and down white, trying to confuse black people on what their history and heritage is. How would they benefit, okay, and I'm going to get back to the story, how would uh, Europeans benefit by you knowing stories like these, and by you being able to get reparations? How is they going to benefit from that? Now, y'all want uh, the reparation lineage base, right? Where the Africans and the people from the Caribbean going to get it. And what they doing to keep white people out of it. Okay. You had to be uh, an African American in the census for the last 10 years. Don't know white people on there put uh, African American. They always put white because they got white privilege. Okay. So they'll never put they black. Okay. And so that's how you exclude Europeans. Uh, brother, uh, One of the brothers was talking about it earlier. You know, and I want to give them that part that, you know, they're going to exclude the European from it by them not being on the census as African-American. OK. And so a lot of people from Africa claim, say that they African-American. That's what they, I'm African. I'm in America. The same as you. That's what African-American mean. OK. Ain't no such thing as a black American. Okay, that gets you nowhere. That gets you nothing. They just tell you what color you are. They don't tell you no land, culture, and history. Okay, period. Now, like this video. Regardless of uh, whatever other jewels and weapons uh, the uh, explorers find, identify Be Bellamy's skeleton may be the biggest treasure of all. Okay, the young captain not only liberated slaves, okay, but expressly stole from the rich and gave to the poor. So much unlike himself to the Robin Hood. See what I'm saying? He liked himself. Cause so he the Robin Hood. See what I'm saying? He was robbing them. See what I'm saying? As a pirate. Okay. It make you go to thinking about Blackbeard and or whatnot too. Hey, hey. Why they call him Blackbeard? See, now this is a map of the uh, Cape Cod, okay, Africa, the Caribbean, and America, okay. Now you see where the desk marked that right there. That was the uh destination of this pirate ship driven by Africans, but they never got to make it because they was too happy they was free, <laughs> too happy they was free. Start drinking. And the ship right now. Let me click out of this right quick because I want to show y'all this bill. All right. Now, here go uh, Clifford, the marine archaeologist who discovered it. Man, it had, uh, uh, he's already discovered uh, $100 million worth of treasure on this ship. And he just started. See what I'm saying? He just started. And so the descendants of these Africans right here might need to get in touch and see if you is a descendant so you can get a piece of that money. Okay? Now, here with the bell or the Wiley Gullah right here. So, there's no denying what it is. Okay? There it is right there. See what I'm saying? Y'all go do, they got National Geographic got a documentary. I'm in here watching on the Wiley Gullah. Okay? I'm in here watching it right now on Black Sam. Okay? See? 
Go Google these things. And then when these goofies get up here and say where the slave ship said, you will have the ammo to attack them. Okay, you will have the right type of information that you can attack them with. See, once you know and you got it in your mind, soon as somebody say a lie, you be like, you lying. You lying. Or it's either that or they, you can tell by what they don't know. See what I'm saying? You can tell, you know, they some goofies by what they don't know. See what I'm saying? By what they say, you can tell what they don't know. See what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? This is how you do research, family. See what I'm saying? And this is why I be in there looking at mining. You see what I'm saying? Geology, archaeology, marine biology. You see what I'm saying? Marine archaeology. I be in there just looking at all those subjects that I know black people like. It's all right to read a book. Okay? It's all right to get the book. But y'all got to go study European history. Then you can understand African history and the reason why certain things, the slave trade was created. See what I'm saying? You got to, to truly understand African history. You need to study European history because they the ones got the first hand accounts. They the ones diving to the ocean, finding these slave ships. You see what I'm saying? They find them. See what I'm saying? Now, what use would it be for a European to bring up a ship and say this is a slave ship? What would be the use? What is he getting out of there outside of being able to want to tell the story? Could them, these fools be saying, oh, man, they lying about slavery. And, uh, and that's so disrespectful. We should beat y'all ass straight up and down. We should just take off our belt and whoop your ass. I'm just going to be real with you. See what I'm saying? Because you disrespecting the ancestors. Now, let me tell y'all something. It's a, uh, you know how the Indians got the Trail of Tears. Well, it's a thing called the Trail of Bones. Look it up. Just type it in, the Trail of Bones. It's a Trail of Bones that's 700 feet long that stretch from the west coast of Africa to the eastern coast of America down by South Carolina. 700 feet long. 50 miles wide, 50, 50 miles wide of bones of Africans that were stoned overboard. See what I, they jumped overboard. See what I'm saying? And when they say that, you know, I'm in the slave trade. ain't really, da, 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 da. You ain't doing nothing but angry in those spirits. OK. So death going to come upon you for disrespecting the, 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 the disrespecting and disturbing those burials out there in the ocean. I get out there and show them to you. See what I'm saying? All the images is already in my phone. I just wanted to bring y'all the Wiley Gullah, okay? And we can get into some marine archaeology because I got it up. Matter of fact, we going to do it when we do PNG. When we go into PNG, then that's when we going to go into back into the, we going to go into the slave, you know, different, uh, Pirate ships, which are slave ships, documented all over the world. Okay, documented all over the world. Okay, why would you go, you know, go to Africa and you just pick up some some seasonings or something, you know? And that's another thing. Damn, European food was so nasty. These people started wars over salt and pre preco and shit, <laughs> salt and pepper or whatever. You know what I mean? With that, with the Africa everywhere. See what I'm saying? It started wars over seasons. But they weren't going over there and not picking up no Africans. They was piling them ships up with seasonings, anything that they could take back to Europe to make money with. Gold, black gold, silver, copper. See what I'm saying? Everything that they, different fruits, herbs that they could take back and sell, man. When the European first seen, when the African first seen the European. He was bony and skinny and dirty. Once he left Africa and went back to Europe with all them guavas and potatoes and you know, herbs and watermelons and all of that, he came back. He was 300 pounds heavy. He was fat, the same white man. He came back with Bibles, a, a ship full of Bibles and missionaries and told the African that this land is is, is, is sinful. 
And it, it produced too many great things. So it's sinful to have all this stuff. So you should just give it to me and I'm going to give you this Bible with Jesus on. See what I'm saying? And then and, and Africa took the Bible. Okay. Then, the, you know, European had all the gold, all the diamonds, all the land. See what I'm saying? This is how it happened. And so, family, do some research on this right here. See, this cutting edge. This cutting edge right here. See what I'm saying? This is a story that I didn't even know. See what I'm saying? 53 pirate ships, a pirate, an African pirate called Black Sam and his African crew. <laughs> and his African crew. And so, family, like this video. Go do this research. Bang on the goofies with this right here. Share the video, family. Bang on them goofies with this type of information. Jop out. Be, be, king. Get free or die. Heavy is the head with a crown.